Hey this is Benny Johnson and welcome to my new tutorial series. In this series I'm going to be talking about Hackintoshing. Now you may or may not have heard this term but basically Hackintoshing is installing Mac OS X on a PC. Now if you've never heard about this term you're probably asking well why would you want to do that when you can install Windows or Linux on your operating system? Why would you want to install Mac OS X on your PC? That's just stupid. Well, my answer to that question is some people really like the Mac operating system. They like the software it provides and just the features of the operating system. And so people really like the operating system. However, they don't like the package that they have to get to actually use the operating system. And this is a Mac. Now, Macs are sort of really restrictive in the fact that you can't upgrade them. They're really expensive uh, compared to what you can get for a PC and that's generally why people don't like the Mac. You can't upgrade them, you can't put four graphics cards in them or anything like that. They're just sort of a monitor that you put on your workbench and away you go. That's it. And PCs offer that flexibility that Macs do not. So what people do is they install OS X on a PC and they get the best of both worlds. They get the best operating system in their opinion and they also get their flexibility in their hardware. So that's why people want to install Mac OS X on a PC and that's what I'm going to be covering through this tutorial series is I'm going to be covering how to install it, how to optimize it, how to get audio graphics working and other just various tweaks to get it running really well on your system. So that's what I'm going to be covering in this tutorial series. In today's episode I'm going to be covering what is Hackintoshing and I'm just going to go through the basic concepts and that sort of thing uh, in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I explained before, Hackintoshing is just basically installing OS X on a PC. Now you may be asking, well why can't I just put the installation disk into my computer and install it? My answer to that question is OS X has only be de been designed to run on Apple hardware and that's the hardware in Macintoshes. So it really makes it hard to install OS X on a PC. However it is possible. So that's basically what Hackintoshing is. It's, it's installing OS X on non-Apple hardware and generally PC and it's jumping over those barriers such as the restrictions to the Mac hardware and that sort of thing it's jumping over those barriers to get it working well on your PC and that's basically what Hackintoshing is although it takes a lot of time and effort it's really worth it in the end if you can get it working really well or if you go buy a already tested package it may be really easy to get it up and running. I dare say as easy as Windows would be to install on a PC. So that's basically what Hackintoshing is. Now you may be wondering, well what the hell, Hackintoshing? That's a stupid name and I'll explain where that came from. So you have the general Apple computers which are well used to be called Macintosh, now they're called sort of Macs and that sort of thing. But basically what they did was they took off the Mac name because well, it's not a Mac, and you may be saying, oh, what a cool name, PC Intosh. I mean, that's awesome. Nah, that shit. So basically what they did was they brought the hack word in, and they made this word Hackintosh. And so you may be asking, well, why Hackintosh? Well, Hackintosh is because it's not officially supported. You have to do modifications and tweaks to the OS to actually get it working well. So that's why they came up with the term Hackintoshing. You may also see some other terms used in communities such as OS X x86, which is just basically a play on words. You've got the OS X, which is the operating system, and you also got this CPU architecture, which is the x86 bit. And they're just some of the terms you'll see in communities used. Uh, so keep those in mind. Now, next, I'm going to go through what you need to actually install OS X on your PC. The first thing is you're going to need a PC, either 64-bit or 32-bit. Um, I think that's a duh uh, answer. You're going to need a copy of the OS X operating system and 
This is generally retails about 30 bucks. You can buy it directly from Apple, or you can get it from eBay or something like that. But really cheap compared to uh, Windows, which is about $200 a copy. So keep it legit. Don't go to Pirate Bay and just buy the software. Really cheap, 30 bucks. I mean, it's practically nothing. Uh, and the third thing is you're going to need compatible hardware components. Because I have to mention this, that beginners find it hard to actually grasp this concept that OS X does not run on e every PC that exists in the world. Just like um, new Windows doesn't run on really old PCs made in the 1990s. And the reason why it doesn't run on all PCs is because some hardware doesn't support uh, what OS X needs to run for applications and audio and that sort of thing. So that's one of the re main reasons why it only runs on some hardware components. But generally, if it's a new PC, it's probably supported and you'll probably be able to get it working. If it's an older PC, the older it gets, the harder it probably will be to get it running well. But I will go in more depth into this topic in a later video tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Now, now I'm going to go through the OS X versions because if you come from a Windows or a Linux background, you're probably not aware about the different various versions available to you. So the first off is Snow Leopard, and this is not the first version of OS X, it's just probably the most main version or the most supported um, Hackintosh uh, OS X version. So this is Snow Leopard, uh, the version is 10.6 you get used to the version structure soon enough. Uh, it was released in 2009 and it just offered performance enhancement. You can get this probably from the Apple Store for about 30 bucks, so really cheap. Next we have Lion. This is version 10.7 and offered various improvements and bought some iOS-like features. Now if you're running a 32-bit CPU and I'll show you how to find that out, in a future tutorial, but basically this is the latest version you can run because uh, in the next version I'll show you that it actually removes support for 32-bit CPUs. But if your CPU is less than three years old, you're probably gonna have support. And next is Mountain Lion, and this is version 10.8. It was released in 2012 and added more iOS features. And again, it removes support for 32-bit CPUs. Now this is generally, this was released really early, probably about a month from making this video, so uh, it's really early and I'm actually running it at, at the moment and we'll try and get to that point where I show you how to actually get to Mountain Lion from Snow Leopard and that's how I'm going to do this tutorial series. So that's basically a rundown of all the most supported Hackintosh OS X versions. Uh, and here's some communities where you can find some great resources. Uh, we've got the Tony Mac x86.com. This is a really, really legit site that opt for non-modified -modif kernel, modified kernels, or anything like that. It's li really legit, and it opts for what you can buy from Apple and install it without any modifications like that. We've also got Insanely Mac, which is another great resource little bit not as legit as Tony Mac but it's pretty good and we also got the OSX86 wiki which basically just has a list of all hardware that actually works with OSX. So that's about a good rundown on what Hackintoshing is, the communities you can access, what the versions are and that sort of thing. So. I'm going to be doing another tutorial, so stay tuned for that and I'll have more information on this topic. Bye.